Hello, welcome back to Revival Recap. I'm Seth Dahl here with Richie Seltzer this week. Come on. He was here for our Saturday services that were just for leaders. So most of it was online. We did have a few of us that got to just be there in person, but we're really excited, a little bit different. We actually get to sit down with our guest speaker this time. So Come on. It's good to have you, good oh, to man. see you again. Such an honor, man. Love being with you. Love being in the in the room, seeing everyone encountering God, seeing your kids, even at the end, just yeah. watching them enjoy the presence. It was fun. I love it. We. It's good to have you here. Me and Richie have just been catching up because we haven't seen each other in a long time. Home Depot. Home I, Depot. I met uh-huh. Seth at Home Depot. You you were so just gotten pregnant, I think, with your first. Mm-hmm. We're going to paint the room. Yeah. I worked in the paint department. That's right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Helping you pick paint for your first yeah. child. Come on. And I, we were pregnant at the same time. That's right. With our first That's child, right. Abigail. And uh, so I think that was the last season we were together. So it's yeah. a lot to catch up with. Yeah. I know. We've been catching up for a long time, telling good stories. Um, but I, on Saturday, I was there for second service, listened to the first service, man, both of them were just incredible for our community, for this time, for this season of life of like, preach the gospel. That's it. How can they believe unless they hear? How can they hear unless someone preaches? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? So. I love that you just talked about evangelism. I love the stories that you told. You told in second service a story about your, um, your was it your son? My daughter. Your daughter. You were singing yep. to her in the womb. Yep. And that was, that was incredible. I remember the same thing, like when my wife was pregnant with our first, our daughter, <clears throat> I would just sing to her in the womb. She had her same song. Um, I remember at that time, what I love about what you carry is it, it, it's such the father's heart for evangelism, not just like, let's try to go get people to say a prayer. You said something about, we don't want stadium of orphans, just saying some prayer. I'm like, you carry that father's heart thing so well. And I remember when my little girl, when I was coming to get paint, singing to her in the womb, talking to her in the womb. And the Lord was like, Hey, you know, the world is a womb. Wow. And I've been talking to my unborn children that are in the womb and I've been speaking to them and I've been praying for them and I've been preparing their yeah. room for them and I've been getting it ready. And I'm just looking for midwives who will help bring my children out of the womb of the world and in to see my face and into my relationship. And I remember those days like the Lord was really wrecking me with his father's heart for evangelism for the world. And you have carried it for yeah. many many years so strong and yeah. i just that, appreciate that yeah that 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 verse psalm 139 god knit us in our mother's womb his thoughts for us are more than the yeah. sand on the seashore they're more than the stars that are in the heaven we're fearfully we're wonderfully made the interesting thing about that verse is uh i got saved at in virginia went to a baptist church they taught me the word of god the yeah. romans road you yeah. know Evangelism was, you know, I buy you a cheeseburger, yeah. share my testimony, John three sixteen. Yeah. I go to YWAM and a lady named Donna Jordan teaches me how to hear God's voice. They give you a book called Is That Really You, God? Wow. Yeah. Which is by Lauren Cunningham, amazing yeah. book on hearing God's voice. It is awesome. And then Donna Jordan started YWAM with him, comes in, amazing lady, I think at the time she's in her 70s, and she reads that scripture in Psalm 139 and John 10, yeah. my sheep hear my voice. They follow me, they know me. You can hear his voice. Why don't you go into the into the corner, learn how to hear God's voice, practice, ask him, what are some of those sands? What are some of those thoughts? Yeah. And I started <laughs> writing down what I was hearing wow. God say to me. And um, and so that whole thing, if he's been speaking over us, what what were you thinking when you chose to create us? What was your dream when you thought of my daughter, Abigail, yeah. in the womb? Like, what does she look like walking in your divine design? Because yeah. if I can see that, I can partner with what you're saying in her life. Wow. And um, I can partner with your heart for her. Mm-hmm. And I think in evangelism, if we can identify with the heart of the Father, if we understood that he was 
a father, we would understand his heart for evangelism. Yeah. You know, this whole thing of reconciliation, you know, it's it's more than something we have to do. It's it's like it's worship unto the Lord. Yeah. You know, I do love <clears throat> you talked about it in first service. We love because he first loved us. Come on. So sometimes it's not we're not trying to love him more. We're learning to receive more of his love and will automatically be compelled by love to just love on the people around us. Yeah. We'll be able to help it. We have an encounter to become an encounter. It's that whole that whole thought process of man, as I become aware of his love for me, I'm I'm full of love. I'm overflowing with the love of God. And yeah. you know, that whole thing of John 14, Jesus said, if you love me, then you'll obey my commandments. Yeah. One of the commandments is to preach the gospel. Yeah. And so many people, they're like, they have an evangelist come through and he tells these stories and either it really inspires them, but at the same time makes them feel like, what am I doing with my life? I guess I'm a bad Christian, you know? And then they're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do it, you know, which is good. Like there's a, there's an element to that, that self-control, that discipline, that's really good. Unless it gets to the point where it's like, you know, thriving, you know? Yes. But that, that that that's the temptation but i think the purest form of evangelism is we love him because he first loved us i encounter the love of god it's that first love fire yeah. like when somebody gets brand new we've all known the, the person who wasn't a believer yeah. all of a sudden they have an encounter with the love of god and it's like everything they talk about is God, 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 God. For some yeah, people, it's exactly. annoying. Like, all you talk about is God now. Yeah. Remember we used to drink together? Yeah. Remember we used to do this together? Yeah. No. And no, no. they can't help themselves. They're they're consumed. All they can think about is God because yeah. they were in love with him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. And you, that's another thing that you said about boldness. Yeah. You talked about boldness was a sign that they had been with Jesus. Yeah. They had been spending time with Jesus. Now they're bold. Um, you also said it's not a personality type. Why would you say boldness is not a personality type? Yeah, I mean, I've heard for many years people be like, "You're just so bold." I'm shy. Yeah, and and I would kind of, I'd say this kind of to shock people a little bit, but I say I don't believe in shyness. Yeah, I think shyness is just fear masquerading as a personality type. Yeah, because mm. what they're saying is you have a bold personality type. I have an introverted. I'm more shy. That, and it's always, this is why I can't do evangelism or why, like it's a disqualifier. Yeah. And, uh, and it got just began to speak to me and he said, you know, evangelism and boldness won't look the same on Chelsea, my wife, as it will on me. Yeah. You know, but if she fully embraces God's idea of who she is, that Psalm 139 thing. Yeah. And she begins to fully love herself and as God loves her, then she'll fully show up. And when she fully shows up in the fullness of who God created her to be, that's boldness. Like, and and when it comes to evangelism, when you can hear God's voice and you love him more than you love the opinions of anyone else, because you realize my identity is rooted in this connection. Like then you're bold because you've heard his voice. The, the power comes from his voice. It, yeah. it, the, the boldness comes from being with them. Yeah. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you will bear fruit. Or yeah. in other words, you will be, there will be a boldness that comes on your life. So. Wow. Come on. I love that. Yeah. This is so good. Um, you also talked in first service, not second, about William Seymour. Yeah. And, and living unoffended so receiving his love being with jesus boom that gives us boldness that gives us love to love the people around us but then william seymour is like man he had all these opportunities to get offended along the way yeah can you just speak a little bit more into that yeah i mean god began to speak to me about william seymour jake hamilton had this line of uh clothing shirts and you could get like William Seymour oh, yeah, or, that's right. I remember that. or uh, Lonnie Frisbee or all these different heroes, you know, Amy Simple McPherson. And and I was trying to pick which one. And I was like, I'm going to get William Seymour's. 
And I, it just launched me into this deep dive study of his life. God began to speak to me. Now, I was led to the Lord in a, in a roundabout way through um, black men who were burning on fire for Jesus. That's yeah. where that message developed from. It's because yeah. even though I grew up in Virginia, we could throw a rock and hit three churches by accident. Yeah, like I, I never met anyone until I met them that was just oozing Jesus. And um, so those I, are the guys he worked with. I worked with. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And so they would pick me up in the morning, blasting Kirk Franklin and wow, gospel music and talk about Jesus said this and Jesus healed sister such and such. And I'm like, we talk about Jesus said something to you. Like yeah. he talks to you. Like I just had never considered that you could have this living relationship with God before. It was more like that. And so I, I say all that because growing up in Virginia, racism you can feel it when you cross the border get in there yeah. like this whole thing that our our country's dealing with is in my face since i've been little i mean i experienced massive amounts of bullying from blacks within playing football and then wow. and then you know i've witnessed family members be racist course, like have yeah. racial mindset my 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 uh stepdad was in a uh, uh, in jail and you have to join a, a white supremacist gang or a black gang or a Hispanic gang or something yeah. to survive. And so I grew up around white supremacy and, wow. you know, all kinds of stuff. And so I felt like God since the beginning has set me up to be a reconciler, like this ministry of yeah. reconciliation. Even Sean Smith is a spiritual father of mine. The first baptism in the Holy Spirit with yeah. power came was through Sean Smith, whose dad was killed by a white police officer. Yeah. Everything kind of set up that. So I began to study William J. Seymour. God said, he's a sign for America. Study his life if you want to see what I'm doing in America and how to sustain revival. Not, I don't believe revival is supposed to be a flash in the pan. Right. I think it's never supposed to end. Yeah. And. Um, and he said, William Seymour's life holds keys for sustaining a move of God. So I began to study. And one of the things that was highlighted to me was that William Seymour had multiple opportunities to be offended. <clears throat> First of all, he could have got offended at God. Yeah. Most people think that Peter uh, denied Jesus, they say, because of fear. Like he was afraid of campfire girl at the fire. Right. And so therefore, he, I don't think that's the case. When I look at it, Peter says... I'll die for you. Right. Everybody else won't. I'll fight to the death. Yeah. And when when it got real in the garden, he was serious. He took out the right. dagger. He, he shot the man's ear off. Yeah. And Jesus rebukes him and says, "Put your sword away. Put your sword away. You Those live who live by the sword, by the sword die, die by the yeah. sword." Puts the man's ear back on. This is my belief. I fully admit this is me reading into the scripture. So that's there's a disclaimer. This is my. You know, this is what I believe. I think that Peter got offended at Jesus in that moment because I think Peter thought Jesus was coming the way that most Jewish people thought, thought he, he the Messiah was coming yeah. to dominate Rome. Yeah. And, and I believe the fence caused Peter to deny Jesus three times, just like John the Baptist started to get offended. Hey, ask him if he's the son. You know, he's the son. Yeah. You said, behold exactly. the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the Lord. Why yeah. are you asking if he's the son now? Jesus says, Blessed are those who are not offended by me after saying, hey, telling the, the blind see, the deaf hear, you know, all these things. Yeah. And so I think William, first temptation that revivalists have to overcome is the temptation to get offended at God because you don't understand his ways. Yeah. You know, um, because that'll that'll cause you to, to, to go into unbelief, to lose your voice. And then and then there's the temptation to get offended at broken humanity. But people are only walking in the light that they have. And yeah. so William Seymour goes to Houston. And and yeah, well, God chooses to use these guys who are registered members in the KKK to teach him about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And yeah. most people think he would have had every right to leave offended because they don't let him in the room. Yeah, Like, no way they could be full of the Spirit and of God or have God on them. And they're preaching the gospel. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, but they're still in this place. Yeah. Yeah, they still why? got these broken areas. But mm -hmm. William Seymour because of his passion for God had guarded his heart to where he realized God will even speak through a donkey. He could speak through these people, listens yeah. through the window, gets the revelation. He doesn't even get the experience yeah. at first. Yeah. Like it again, he could have got offended at God. Yeah. Like how come they're getting these experiences? How many people get like shut down? 
this must not be the Holy Spirit because it ain't happening to me. It ain't yeah. happening to this holy person, but it's happened to that sinner. Yeah. Like, and so they get offended at God, but he kept his heart pure, continued to press in, continued to ask. And then obviously we know he goes to Los Angeles. The door gets shut for him to preach. At the, so he could have got offended at the church. Yeah. So there's another, you, a lot of people get offended at the church and it stops the flow of revival in their life and through their life. Yeah. Guards his heart there and he gets invited into a house church. And obviously we know Bonnie Bray Street and the Azusa Street revival happens. Yeah. And so. And we're still reaping. So I think that's one of the lessons we can learn from, from William Seymour in there. I think it's an important lesson for us to learn. Those are huge lessons. Not to get offended at God mm -hmm. and not to get offended at the church. Yep. Wow. Yep. And I think for those who are, I mean, this is, I, I started studying revival history in America and I started noticing where did the racial riots happen? Where was their upheavals? And, and a lot of it had to do with race. And right around all of those big, like when they burned down LA and the riots happened in Detroit, all around that time, there's like the Jesus people movement happening, happening simultaneously. In, simultaneously. Yeah. And I'm like, there's either a preemptive strike of the enemy to try to stop the move of God with yeah. stirring up racial division, or there's a counterpunch of the enemy to try to stop, stop the momentum of it. But there's always this same demonic principality, you know, yeah. fight that happens. And I said, we've got to wise up to it and become I, you cannot make me not love you. Yeah. I don't care if you're racist against me. I don't care what you do. You can't make me not love you. You're not that powerful. That classic Danny Silk yeah, stuff, exactly. man. And we've got to become unoffendable. You don't get to decide if I, <laughs> how I run my life. I'm not going to be at the mercy of your dysfunction. Wow. <laughs> it feels like this is where a lot of the church is right now. Like, yeah. I wasn't meaning it to go this direction. It was like, if I'm honest, looking around on social media and stuff, I even see a lot of believers that are yeah. not, they're not just hurt. A lot of people are hurt by the church right now. A lot of people yeah. are offended. And a lot of the church is kind of going at each other. And this is a huge lesson. Yeah. William Seymour, my goodness. Well, that's where the message came from on Sunday of focus. I heard the Lord say focus. Like there's a lot of, you know, the enemy's trying to bait us into fighting the right fights in the wrong way. But the Lord said, what's your ministry, Richie? It's the ministry of reconciliation. It's the ministry of not counting their trespasses against them. Yeah. It's the ministry of, okay, for the joy set before you, you endured the cross while we were yet still sinners. Yeah. Either I'm going to partner with the Spirit of Christ who says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Or I'll partner with the spirit that the sons of thunder partnered with yeah. when they said, you want us to call down yeah, fire. fire from heaven on them? You know, so you don't get either you partner with Christ or you partner with the accuser. Yeah. And um, I said, the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell the church to focus, focus on the author and the finisher of their faith, Jesus. And uh, I think that in that will eliminate a lot of confusion, a lot of bitterness and depression and a lot of things that people are going through with right now yeah this is i noticed you preached second corinthians chapter five talking about focus talking about reconciliation you just mentioned it but i just want to read this and then talk a little bit more about it all this is from god this is second corinthians five eighteen, who reconciled us to himself through christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that god was reconciling the world to himself in christ not counting people's sins against them and so reckon that's the ministry and that it committed to us the message of reconciliation so the message that brings reconciliation is the one of not counting god's not mad at your sins god's not keeping track of your sins he's not counting them against you and if we're going to carry that message will bring reconciliation it's like hey yeah. if i refuse to get offended if i refuse to count sins against you yeah. that god's not counting I actually create a way for us to reconcile. Come on. That's, yeah, I, I don't need to punish you. Like, I don't need to judge you. That pressure is off of me. There's one who has the right, the one who has the ability, the one that, the only one that can throw the stone Yeah. is Jesus. And right. he says, 
neither do I condemn you. Yeah. And and um, and this is my blood shed to forgive you of your sins. And his blood is enough. And in that, we put down our rocks, we put down our anger, we put down our bitterness, we put down and there's a there's a a breathing moment yeah. that comes to people that do that. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen it. You've totally. seen a husband and a wife and they've they've dug their feet in the ground. Yeah. They're in the argument and then one of them says this isn't worth it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you can and the other one says I'm sorry too. And you feel that that you can even see it on their face and if you've experienced you can feel that that sudden ah, moment. Yeah. You know, I think that's what America needs. They they need that moment. And obviously it's from both sides. Yeah. Um, but I think it's going to be a real powerful display when our black brothers and sisters in Christ lead the way yeah. in that. Because obviously that's, that's the people group I think the enemy is trying to leverage mm-hmm. their pain yeah. for his own purposes. Yeah. But if they choose to powerfully stand up and like Simon who carried the cross of Jesus, yeah. what a prophetic sign for the church. Yeah. Probably from Libya, probably a black man, and God in his sovereignty chooses him to be a sign for carry carrying the cross of Jesus. Like this is the invitation for the church to for the black church to lead America in a revival that doesn't stop. Like God's trying to rise up William Seymour's right now. That's it. A bunch of them. That's it. Wow. This is good. Come on. Anything else you want to say? And then I feel like we should just pray for our country. Yeah, come pray on. Pray for um, the boldness to share the love of God, to to receive the love of God, share the love of God, that the love of God can push the fear out of everyone's life that's going on. But is there anything else you want to say before? Yep. The one with the most hope has the most influence. And we're the people who have the spirit of God inside of us, which is the spirit of reconciliation. He wants you to experience the father's love in such a way that you're so full of him that when they see you, they see the father. And the father has brought us all together in one body. And I want you to read through John 17, read the prayer of Jesus, that we would be one together, that they would know that he was sent from the Father. And so I just bless you who are watching this right now. I bless you. I, I say that he can identify with your pain. If you're, if you're watching this and something's irritating, but you know it's true, he can identify with your pain. We don't have a God who can't identify with human suffering. He chose to get in the mud of humanity with us and to identify. And so I just want you to know he's with you now. And if you'll just release it to him, you'll feel that sudden wave of peace, healing, and almost feel like you're sane again. So I bless those who are feeling confused right now, watching, feeling confused. I bless you. Um, Those who are wondering what to do, It's simple. Be a minister of reconciliation. Preach the gospel. I pray for all who are watching right now and listening that you would experience the love of God in such a way that you become full of it and you overflow, which is the purest form of evangelism. Bless you. Come on. This is good. Well... Thanks for coming. Come on, man. Thanks for talking. Thanks for reminding us what we're here for, what we're here to do. I love the stories. I love hearing your heart. I love it. Come on, man. We appreciate it. We receive it. We pull it off you. (laughs) Let's go bring some reconciliation. Let's do it. Let's go live unoffended. Let's go. Let's go receive the love of God and just let it overflow out of us all over the place thank you come on for these words for your heart for your life we really really received a lot yeah awesome Appreciate my honor it. my pleasure always is bethel awesome my favorite church that preached it <laughs> good that's what we like to hear well thank you guys for joining us today for joining us with richie seltzer and uh, we'll be back for more revival recap soon 
But as always, you can follow along the rest of our journey at BethelATX.com and we'll see you somewhere soon. All right, bless you guys and we love you.